I've talked a lot about how we are in a civil war. Some call it a cold civil war, the cultural civil war, whatever you want to call it. But there is street violence. So today I'm going to be talking about fake news and how, at least according to Axios, it looks like the left is a bigger consumer of fake news than the right, which I don't necessarily believe to be true, but they have a study, which I'll pull up. Stick around, because I have another video on this channel, look for it, that highlights ridic like crazy street violence that happened in Portland, and that'll be me highlighting the more physical aspect. There's a video from the other day of people taking over a street and like anti-fascists directing traffic, and there's no police anywhere. They actually start hitting someone's car. That'll be the next video. This one's going to talk more about data points, information, and the root of it. So this is from Axios. America the radicalized. It's going to get worse. Virtually every major American institution is being radicalized or being reshaped by the radicalization of our public lives. I have said this time and time again. The street violence of last year will only get worse. It's still happening. We saw some street violence up in, in uh, Providence just a couple days ago. There was some in Portland, which again will be the next video. And I keep telling people it's getting worse. I recently moved out of the New York area because I don't want to live in a major city right now. I'm not, uh, I, I wouldn't call myself a conspiracy theorist. I wouldn't say I'm overly paranoid. But when you do the work that I do, when you're on the ground watching the violence, when you read the news every day, it's possible that the news is sensationalizing even my views. However, when I, when I see the things I do on the ground, when I hear the way people talk, when, when I hear how my neighbors talk, I feel like there is a strong possibility that things, maybe in the next several years, could get really, really bad. Look, it can start with people losing their jobs, but now we have videos of people screaming, you know, like, get the white person, and there's a real racial animosity, where even non-white people are called white people, and it's like, the tribes are so separate from each other, they have no idea what they're talking about anymore. Like, they don't talk to each other. They say, they say in the story... You see this most vividly in politics, where the White House and Congress are often the cause and effect of the radicalization. You now see it in the courts and the Supreme Court in particular, where a narrow party line vote made Brett Kavanaugh the next justice after a nasty personal political brawl. Already lawyer Michael Avenatti is calling for a new Democratic litmus test, increasing the size of the court from to, not, to 11 from 9. And what's really uh, additionally alarming to me, Brett Kavanaugh was confirmed with only 50 votes. As long as we've had 50 states, this is the smallest, this is the lowest number ever. Because it was before, I think you needed 60 votes to, uh, to confirm a Supreme Court justice. That was changed by 51, I believe, by the Democrats. But the reason I bring this up is that right now we are seeing straight party division. The Republicans voted one way except for one Democrat, Manchin. And the, uh, the Republicans voted one way except for Manchin and the Democrats voted the other. And that is showing the divide is getting worse and worse and worse. There used to be some Democrats and Republicans who'd cross, the, cross over party lines, and now it's getting more and more restricted. There's only one place things can go after that. If people on the left are absolutely convinced that there is a you know, neo-Nazi white supremacist running the country, and that there's no chance for survival, they'll start going crazy. And they are. There are a lot of people that spew the most ridiculous nonsense ever. I'm desperately trying to de-propagandize my friends when they post nonsense. I have family members who post insane nonsense from fake news sources. So what I found interesting in this, specifically, is that it says, a new st Sarah has the data, a new study of hyper-partisan publishers from social media analytics company Newswhip finds that the top Facebook pages for mainstream political content were Fox News and Occupy Democrats by a considerable distance. Both publishers have driven nearly 100 million engagements on their Facebook native content for 2018 so far. The reason why this is terrifying. NewsGuard is a service which rates uh, news outlets for their credibility. It gives Fox News a check mark. There's a, there's a green check mark and a red X. Red X means it's bad. There's a lot of reasons why it's bad. Fox News is considered credible. In fact, the only thing that NewsGuard found wrong with Fox News is that they don't disclose their funding. We know it's a Murdoch company, but their funding is a bit obscured. That's it. That's not impugning their, their uh, journalistic integrity. That's just saying we don't know what their motives are necessarily for their partisan bias. Fox News does have a partisan bias. Is it a problem that people on the right share partisan, hyper-partisan content? Yeah, of course. But Occupy Democrats is rated by NewsGuard with a red X and considered by many people to be a conspiracy theory propaganda website. 
Occupy Democrats, according to a source of mine, is an endeavor simply to make money and the people who work there, not all of them, but the people who are high up, I'm told, are not necessarily political, but more business minded. Now, I don't know if that's true. I'm not trying to accuse them of anything. I can't say whether or not they actually believe the things they post, but I can say that other companies, NewsGuard, for instance, has rated them to be essentially a, a fake news website. They are given a bad rating. If it's true that conservatives are using Fox News, sure, that's kind of bad, but at least Fox News is considered credible. They do update their articles with corrections, and a lot of the content on Fox News' website is actually fine. It's actually rather okay. It's their opinion people on the Fox News channel, which are hyper-partisan and sometimes, rather often, spew nonsense. Occupy Democrats is 100% activist content. They produce content that is propaganda. It is politically motivated information. If this is where the left is getting their information, God help us all. Now, the study, I have it, it's, it's, it's really long and, you know, maybe I should shrink it because it's kind of hard to read. I don't know exactly, uh, actually, so, so here we go. This is, this is interesting. Top publishers writing on political topics. Before jumping into the hyper-partisan side of things, we wanted to find the legacy publishers that drive the most engagements to their political content. To do this, we searched for stories containing around a dozen political keywords to see which publishers had the most engagements to that content in 2018 so far. CNN came out on top with nearly 100 million engagements. Fox News, 87 million. So we can see that CNN is the overwhelming driving force. That's actually not that bad. They're not great. I actually think CNN, I give them like a 5.1 out of 10. Like they do produce a lot of content that's fine. Their opinion section actually has pro-Trump stuff in it, but they're the channel. Let's not talk about the channel. We're talking about CNN.com. CNN.com is pretty okay. CNN, the channel, I wouldn't recommend, nor would I. I, I actually, I'd, I'd actually weigh Fox News a little bit higher than CNN, but I would say avoid all of their pundits. For the most part, CNN is fine when they're reporting on like general information, and so is Fox News. But when it comes to their pundits, it can get pretty bad. So it looks like they even put the Daily Wire in here, which is really interesting because many people on the left don't like the Daily Wire. They think it's a, a tabloid fake news website. But the Daily Wire outranked Huffington Post, and even Breitbart is on here, and Breitbart is not viewed as credible by uh, NewsGuard. But what's the, uh, what's, what's the hyper-partisan stuff? So now we can see, look at this. The top political story came from LGBTQ Nation. Republicans vote to make it illegal nationwide to ban gays and lesbians from adopting. And that's got 1.58 million engagements. We can see that most of the top stories come from, well, not most, but there's, there's a few, like American Military News, Partisan, and then we can see that we've got more of the mainstream uh, sources. Talks about who has the top stories. New York Times, one of the top stories. Unsurprising. I think the New York Times tends to do a good job. Tends to. I'm really pissed at them because they hired an open racist. Top Facebook pages for political content. And this is by... Here we go. This is the, Okay, here we go. This is the data we needed. The top Facebook pages for mainstream political content were Fox News and Occupy Democrats by a considerable distance. Both publishers have driven nearly 100 million engagements of their Facebook native account for 20, 2018 so far. Most of these pages are the Facebook pages of publishers, though one notable exception is the page of Donald Trump, which has almost 17 million engagements. Look at this. This is insane. CNN is pulling in less than half of what Fox News is pulling in uh, in terms of engagements on the top page. That means Republicans, conservatives, are going to Fox News, which is partisan. You, sh you need to get out of your bubble for sure, but at least it is credible, right? You're going you're gonna to get biased content. But Occupy Democrats is insane. They're not rated credible. That scares me. Now this politics is also ridiculous. The Hill's okay, CNN is okay, Breitbart is bad, Donald Trump, I would definitely not trust the Donald Trump source. For those, look, even if you're a fan of Trump, you have to realize Trump's going to be giving you the best of the best. So while he might not be lying to you, you're, you're gonna be, you're, you're gonna have blinders on, and I'd recommend getting out of that bubble. Fox News, substantially better than Donald Trump. I would say, if you're going to pick a source, do Fox News. If, you're gonna, if you want your conservative, you know, uh, source, then I would recommend The Hill is probably the next one because The Hill's, they're, they're pretty okay. Now this politics, hyper-partisan, their president said at VidCon that they have anti-Trump activists working in their company. Another thing that I wanted to really point out, and let's see if I can uh, find this. They point out that a Minnesota journalist was fired from a local NBC station for wearing a MAGA hat while covering a Trump rally. 
A longtime Palm Springs anchor was forced to resign after defending Kavanaugh from sexual assault allegations. The New York Times conceded it made a mistake when the news story about Kavanaugh bar fight at Yale was co-bylined by a writer who had tweeted her disapproval of the nomination. Since Trump was elected, by our colleague Sarah Fisher's account, nearly a dozen reporters have either been fired or lost their jobs for incendiary social media posts, mostly all of them over politically charged subjects. And that's when they start talking about this data from the, uh, the hyperpartisan study. So I don't, you know, it, it's a long study and I'm not going to do a, an entirely, uh, entire, you know, breakdown of it. But uh, there, are some more, there are some more interesting sections. The first thing to note when we're looking at left versus right in terms of content production is that there are significantly more producers of right-wing content than there are of left-wing content. Only 88% of public, uh, publishers are identified in our left-wing category compared, only 88 publishers are identified in left-wing compared to 357 publishers for the right. This categor, uh, categorization is based on third-party definitions of political affiliation, with the sites then tagged as such in our database. This is actually a slight decrease when compared to the last iteration of the report when there were 373 on the right and 87 on the left, but they still significantly outnumber the left in number as well as engagement. We can see on the left, the top publisher is The Root. The Root is part of the Gizmodo network, extremely biased. All of these, I would say, you know, uh, uh, let's go through this. Let's go through this, all right? The Daily Wire is not bad, and they get 132 million engagements the left is only getting 25 million. And this plays into the data that I've seen where conservatives are constantly looking for more information and the left is not. And I think that's why you'll probably see a lot of left-wing protesters who don't really know what they're protesting. And I'm not trying to be a dick, but it's true. I've been on the ground. I have asked them. It is a common trope. You can see that Western Journal, Breitbart, you know, it kind of bums me up Breitbart is so high because they should, they, they're, you know, if I were to rank this, I'd put Daily Wire and I'd put, uh, I'd actually put Louder with Crowder uh, up here. The Blaze had moved down. Gateway Pundit, I don't know. I do know Cassandra tends to do a good job, but she has written some stuff that's been questionable. But I would say for most of what I've seen from Cassandra, I know her, has been, has been pretty good. We can go over here and go to The Root. The Root is bad. Raw Story is bad. Daily Coast. Daily Coast isn't even like a news site. It's like an activist blog where you can just like post things if you're an activist. Think Progress is overt propaganda. Mother Jones, Politics USA, Palm Report, The, the, the Nation. These are all literally... The Nation's okay. They're a progressive magazine, but they're literally a magazine. The rest of these are literally activist organizations. Daily Wire isn't. They're just a conservative media company. Western Journal, Breitbart, I would, link, I would say is closer to something like Mother Jones, but they're still just a partisan media company. It's crazy that you see the left, although they consume much less in alternative media, it is activist content, not news. I mean, look, Media Matters is literally a progressive nonprofit. They're not a media organization. So... I wanted to point these things out because now I'm going to make a video about actual terrifying insanity at the street level in Portland. So stick around and that video will be up on my second channel in a few minutes. It's uh, 6.15 Eastern time. So if it's already passed that, just go to my channel, youtube.com slash timcastnews, and you'll see the video.